News of the artificial heart was another reminder of how far medical science has come. But what about tomorrow? One man who's thought a great deal about what's going on on the medical horizon is Dick Teresi, executive editor of Omni magazine. He's also the author of several books and articles about the frontiers of science and medicine. Mr. Teresi, let's go through the list of some major medical areas and tell us what you see as practical advances and when we're likely to get them. Let's start with uh, cancer treatment. When are we likely to have effective treatment for cancer and what will it consist of, do you think? Well, that's the most loaded subject because uh, you really don't want to, there's so many raise, so many hopes have been raised and then dashed over the years. But what looks really interesting is, is the genetic approach, which is during the past year, uh, the genetic component of cancer has finally been isolated. In other words, a cancer gene, a gene, an outlaw kind of gene in the body that can start producing cancers uh, when exposed to carcinogens. Uh, while this is obviously not a treatment, it does mean that if we can trace for the proteins that this gene produces, we will have an early test. And if we can block the actions of the genes, of course, we'll have a cure. But this, uh, we're talking now a decade at least, and this, this is very experimental. About 10 years from now, you think? I would say so. More shortly on the horizon are, are things such as monoclonal antibodies, which are basically the it's like it's the human it's a human antibody it's a uh, it's the it's the technique the body uses against cancer except in this case we use mice uh, because we can take the uh, mouse antibodies and we can clone them we can clone all of one sort therefore you get the word monoclonal uh, and you get a very powerful uh, immune system against against the cancer. And you see some of that coming a bit sooner well, than the genetic. It's already being used it was used on a 67 year old man at Stanford who had a uh, an incurable cancer. Not even interferon would work on it, and he has been cured. It's also been used against leukemia. And by 1984, it's, it's pretty likely that monoclonal antibodies will be used uh, as detection methods. Uh, hitting the market as an actual cancer treatment It's probably a few more years beyond that. What about the treatment of pain? What advances and when do you see coming there? Well, probably I'd say w one of the most startling discoveries of the last decade was the discovery that we have endorphins, which are natural opiate-like substances in our brains, and that the brain consists of a series of locks and keys uh, into which natural chemicals fit. Uh, endorphins are a painkiller of types. There are also natural substances that act like Valium, uh, like a tranquilizer. And the, the problem with current painkillers and current tranquilizers is that they're too general. They affect too many things in the brain, so we get terrible side effects. Uh, what drug companies are now working on are, are tailor-made drugs that fit right into these, these locks in the brain, and we're going to get a far more precise type of uh, painkiller, I'd say, within three years. This is what the drug companies are predicting. Uh -huh. What about the possibilities of prolonging life or slowing down the aging process? Well, the, probably the most phenomenal statement is being made by a uh, scientist named W. Donner Denkla at the uh, National Institute of Alcoholism and Alcohol Abuse. He claims that we all start dying at age 20, not later on. And it all has to do, it's, it's not that we just die, it's not that we just age, but that there's an actual type of death hormone secreted by the pituitary in the brain. Uh, and he's done some phenomenal experiments with, with rats in which he has removed, these are aging rats, removed their pituitary gland and then substituted the other drugs that the pituitary normally affects, such as uh, thyroid and, and growth hormone, and found that their heart and lungs would start reverting to a, a more youthful appearance, a more youthful functioning, uh, and that 20% uh, of these rats uh, live to an age of a, a human equivalency of 95 years. Uh, what he predicts is not really an immortality pill, but a kind of blocker, an antidote to this uh, hormone. That's the most startling. Uh, it probably will not, it, it may not work out. This is probably the most futuristic. Probably the less futuristic and more practical, of course, are things such as the artificial heart and other artificial organs that will prolong life. Uh, it's interesting, we were talking about earlier about predictions that just didn't wash out in the 30s. Uh, as little as four years ago, I went to the, the University of Utah and did a story on... Where the artificial heart was developed. Right, where they were developing something called the Jarvik 7, a plastic artificial heart and uh, they could not get funding. 
when I published the story, we were roundly criticized by doctors and other scientists as being too fantastic. Only four years ago. Only four years ago. Today, of course, it's in Barney Clark. Well, thank you, Jim.